Good morning and welcome to SAGES 2021. I'd like to thank the program chairs here for, for this invitation. Um, let's see. I have no dis disclosures. Usually when I'm in this kind of sessions, the fun part is when we are discussing the technical aspects of the procedure. So uh, keeping that in mind, I'm gonna keep my discussion, my presentation to very short critical points only. If you pay attention to this, then you could bypass reviewing the literature on this and then focus on the most fun part, which is the technical details. So today, my objective is to talk about patient selection, indications, and preoperative evaluation for distal pancreatectomy. So why do we even have to talk about this, right? Because MISDP has shown to be superior in several aspects, including blood loss, length of stay, gastric emptying, and in general morbidity. And it has shown mostly equivalent to complication rate and oncological outcomes. And one has to be familiar with leopard trial where it's shown that there is good functional recovery and quality of life and cost uh, in, in performing MIS uh, distal pancreatectomies. Having said that, this is one of the studies from Netherlands where um, they surveyed 237 pancreatic surgeons from, um, and out of those, they considered 203 responses. Uh, from 27 European countries where the surgeons have said 91% of them has said that they perform advanced MIS surgery, and 73% of them has said that they have done MIS distal pancreatectomy. But what was concerning about this study was a quarter of those surgeons have said that they were suspecting inferior outcomes uh, from performing MIS uh, distal pan pancreatectomy in terms of oncological outcomes, which is lymphadenectomy, margins, and survival. And that was concerning, but this study came out in 2016 and the survey was performed in 2014. So that led to um, this paper, um, which has uh, kind of uh, put together the discussions that went on in international uh, MIPR and also 2016 IHPBA, where they looked at about close to 600 studies, and out of them, 52 studies were, um, uh, were taken into consideration, and they had a good amount of studies dealing with oncological outcomes. None of these were randomized studies. They were all retrospective studies, and so, but they did have about good 16 studies that dealt with oncological outcomes, and a good number of patients, as you can see, 5,000 and 6,000 patients. They came to the conclusion that minimal invasive has similar outcomes to open, but more, what was more interesting was that there was a trend towards decreased blood loss and length of stay with minimal invasive approach uh, compared to open approach. And they have recommended that you sh one should consider factors that could uh, increase the complication rate when performing minimal invasive distal pancreatectomy. So that leads us to consider what were those factors? Well, they categorized it into several categories. One is very self-explanatory, which is surgeon experience. If one has a good amount of experience, not just the surgeon, but also the team's experience, obviously you would take on more complicated cases and more complex patients. And so does the patient, uh, general morbidity. You know, a, a young, healthy person, you know, would tolerate a little bit more of, um, of uh, the, uh, the technique, uh, even if there is a variation in the technique compared to a, an older person. And also the procedure, you know, is a vis visualization with MIS versus open and how the tissues, does your center have adequate uh, equipment to perform minimal invasive surgeries and, um, distal pancreatectomy, and the tumor characteristics, is it a proximal tumor versus distal tumor, benign versus malignant? The reason we mentioned that is because you have already, I have already brought to your attention where a quarter, uh, it, a one third of surgeons were concerned that this would result in inferior oncological outcomes with minimal invasive distal pancreatectomy. So that was into consideration, and also locally advancement, is it encasing other surrounding structures? 
And also you have to consider about different health systems. I mean, we are talking about worldwide, not just domestic. So cost of the procedure and, uh, and the culture of the uh, culture where the procedure is performed. So, and I think this is uh, one of the important slides I would like you to pay attention. So when somebody is going on with uh, MISDP, one should always keep in mind what factors could uh, impact my conversion of that procedure to open, correct? So high BMI and also not just high BMI, the, the distribution of the fat, right? Um, adhesions, um, uh, large and proximal tumors, those are the patient characteristics. In terms of the surgeon characteristics, localization of the lesion, proximal versus distal lesions, hemorrhage, bleeding is a big factor in conversion to open surgeries, and also margin, adi uh, uh, adequate margin to see that you, you, know, you come up with an R0 resection. These were the most important things. Uh, to consider, so when you're evaluating the patient for, uh, for MIS approach. What are the indications? Well, the indications, uh, like I mentioned before, where they thought the MIS is good for benign lesions, now that concept has changed and it's still evolving with gain of experience, technique, and technology. Um, this is one of the studies that has looked at their own experience in 300 consecutive patients, and you can see the top two reasons is because of tumors of the pancreas. So that remains uh, the most um, uh, leader in terms of doing MISDP. But if one were supposed to categorize this, there are benign reasons, there are borderline disease and malignant diseases. Uh, now, this is the important one out of the three objectives that I wanted to discuss is the preoperative evaluation. How do you evaluate these patients uh, for MISDP? I would say it's no different from open, but let's go in, in a uh, logical manner. I don't know about your practice, but in my practice, most of these patients come because their imaging showed pancreatic lesion and the imaging was performed for some other reasons unrelated to pancreas. If one were supposed to see these patients, you know, a triphasic CT scan is really good. The reason being it localizes the, re uh, the lesion, it shows the characteristics of the lesion, so gives you diagnosis also, and also lets you know whether it's resectable or not resectable. As you know, I know CA, you know, pancreatic portal, uh, portal vein phase is really good, and for neuroendocrine tumors, arterial phase. And if you're dealing with a cystic lesion and also thinking about maybe liver meds, MRI is a good, uh, good imaging modality to characterize those cystic lesions. If one is still an in, indeterminate in, in lesion and not really clear, you can consider EUS, where you you know there is a necessity for uh, sampling the cystic fluid or it's an atypical lesion. One can proceed with EUS. The non-routine imaging but still performed is CT, MR, angio, PET, CT. These are more for proximal tumors where you're thinking most probably vascular involvement and might have to deal with those structures or if you're thinking about metastatic lesion, then this is, um, this is a good study to perform along with the routine that we usually do for any oncological procedures dealing with uh, HPV surgery, which is tumor markers, biomarkers, staging with CT of chest, and also look at patient cardiopulmonary status. And, uh, and um, in our center, we discuss these cases in the GI tumor boat. And also you need to understand what the patient's family support is like. Um, the other important point that I wanted to mention about think about vaccinations, because if you're thinking about doing a splenectomy along with the uh, distal pancreatectomy, you know, these are the three vaccinations you should consider. Um, and usually a, a booster in about eight weeks, especially with meningococcal and pneumococcal vaccination. Let me conclude uh, what I have mentioned in the last 10 minutes in the next 30 seconds. A minimal invasive distal pancreatectomy, the outcomes are equivalent, and I would say it's better than open surgery. Um, and the number of cases is rising exponentially. And selection of these candidates, we are, become, we are becoming more, selecting them more complex cases. And the indication is changing with our experience. Um, I, I don't treat any different benign or oncological in terms of whether categorizing them to open or minimal invasive. 
And the first line is, as I discussed before, CT, MRI, in terms of diagnosing, localizing, resectability. I would say this is the mainstay technique in approaching left-sided pancreatic lesions now. Thank you.